Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge, 5.35 a.m. Central Daylight Time, uh, April 19th, 2020. Okay, have Gibson's Finest Rare. Look at that. There's a beaver, a two deer, maple leaf, and it tells you it is aged 12 years. The youngest whiskey in this blend, Canadian whiskey blend, is 12 years old. The youngest whiskey. Okay. Taste fully aged. The website is not worth posting if they even have it up anymore. The website never said anything except we have a new label design and uh, some cool guy drinking it. it. It was a useless web, really a web page more than a website. There was no useful, like I say, no useful information. It, and it just showed you the two types they have, the rare and then there's one called silver. And there may be some other varieties that they don't bother mentioning, okay? Because, you know, a lot of these liquor companies have their brands and then the brands they don't bother showing, but that you see clearly on the shelf, like early times. There's early times American whiskey. Hey. But sometimes you'll be in a store and see early times bottled and bond. 100 proof. Don't try finding that on their website. You won't. This big, heavy glass, not plastic like most of these things, but glass heavy glass too gibson's finest it's got a wooden cap with a maple leaf and a description of the whiskey and then it's got a real cork not some plastic rubberized cork but real now this bottle 1750 milliliters was sold at savannah discount they had a whole case of them on display for $9.99. Now, I'm not joking about that. When I saw that, I thought this must be a mistake. It was no mistake. It was $9.99. There was no way I was passing that up. And I've had people in Canada tell me that that would be $65 there. I checked some American liquor store online because you got some American liquor stores that'll show their products online, even if they don't deliver. Just showing you what they have so you can go over there and pick it up. It was like $50, $50, $55 for $9.99. That's like one of the cheapest prices in the history of the world. I mean, think about this. This only Walmart sells blended Canadian whiskey cheaper than that. And that's three cents cheaper, $9.96 for this size bottle. But it's in a big plastic bottle, and it's not a 12-year aged. Good price, says Craig Swanson. Hello, Craig. Thanks for watching. Yeah, great price. Fantastic price. Unbeatable price. Okay, so I'm that you notice I didn't put down in the description when this whiskey was introduced. Can't get any definitive information on that. They got people that write stuff on the internet saying, well, it came out in 1934 and then it, they stopped making it at some point. And it was an American that started Gibson's. It was an American whiskey, they say. But when Prohibition came in, he went to Canada and started making Canadian whiskey to keep his business going. And then um, something happened and it, wasn't around, and then it got restarted in 1972, this brand, and now it's owned by William Brandt and Sons. I can't find any reliable information of any of that story. It's probably true, 1972 and all, but I'm not going to put it in the description. I do know it's William Grant and Sons because they got it listed on their website, but they don't say anything about it. They just have a list. They just show that they make it. So there's no use putting that link. Um, so that's it. That's all I know about it. I know it exists, and... Um, I know it's a lot more than $9.99 normally, more like $55.99, $50.99 US. So now is it any good? Well, I haven't been totally pleased with it, honestly. 
Good morning, says Zach Robinson. I have benchmark whiskey in my Irish coffee this morning. Ah, benchmark straight. Now, benchmark is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey made by Sazerac at Buffalo Trace in Frankfurt. And, and just where this was bottled. Now, James Fox is also bottled at Buffalo Trace, but it's distilled, aged, and blended in Canada. Canadian whiskey with natural flavors. Nowhere does it say blended Canadian whiskey, though. Usually there, there's a requirement. It has to say either blended Canadian whiskey or Canadian whiskey a blend. But for some reason, it doesn't say that. So is it blended? Um, I don't think it's straight whiskey, but it's weird that they don't say that because that's, from what I understand, a legal requirement. You either have to say blended Canadian whiskey or Canadian whiskey a blend. It says neither one of those things. Could it be a label that passed through and they didn't notice it? I'm talking about the regulators. Could be. They haven't changed the labels significantly since 1975. Is there a relationship between Benchmark and James Fox? Yes. Benchmark was started by Seagram's, I think, in 1968 or 67 as a straight bourbon whiskey for their portfolio. It was called Seagram's Benchmark. Had an interesting bottle design. Guess it had a following. But then remember, Seagram started to fall apart. The company started to fail. And they sold James Fox, which they also created in 1975, to Sazerac. Then later, after as Seagram's completely dissolved and their assets were sold off, Sazerac bought up Benchmark and other stuff from Seagram's Benchmark, which they rebranded because I guess they figured that it needed an update or something. So they renamed it McAfee's Old Number 8 Benchmark, sort of a Jack Daniels mimic bottle. It's a three-year age, 80-proof Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Did they drop the proof? I think so. I think Benchmark used to be 86 proof. Uh, it might have always been three years. Could have been two years because you know only, you're only required to age it two years if it's uh, Kentucky straight bourbon. Uh, Canadian whiskey has to be a three-year age requirement, minimum three-year age. So, What you recommend for a person that barely drinks, says Lil Wop. If you barely drink... Uh, would say like um, Bud Light, Michelob Ultra, Coors Light, Old Milwaukee Light, Milwaukee's Best Light, something light if you barely drink. And probably just stick to the low. And if you want to splurge and get a little higher alcohol, then you can get Miller High Life. Oh, Miller High Life Light would be good. Miller High Life, the full body, Ice House is going a little overboard. So I would avoid Ice House because it's 5.5%. My neighbor across the street said, is this Ice House considered plenty strong? 5.5? Because I think she might have drank too many of them and she could feel it. I said, no, nah, it's high average though. But when, I, when she wanted me to pick her up some beer last week, she wanted me to pick up Coors Light. Um, sorry. Corona, Corona light, Corona light. I think she, she thought that the ice house was too strong, although she likes it. Anyway, on to this. Ever done a Jaeger bomb? Says Justin Hopkins. No, but I've heard of him. Okay. Well, they're both golden, so the appearance won't matter. Now, I had a hard time yesterday when I was doing that cognac brandy taste challenge. I was doing the Martell Blue Swift versus the uh, Martell BS. But the Blue Swift was a lot darker, and I, I did all the mixing, and I was talking. Then I looked, and I could see the darker one. I had to redo it, mix them again. And they were very interesting to smell and taste, but then I got it wrong. <laughs> I got them mixed up. I couldn't tell one from the other. I was embarrassed. Now, I could use an excuse, which is I don't have much experience with Martell. So I, it's hard for me to say. And that is the truth. 
I've barely had Martel VS or the Blue Swift. What I've experienced so far is very positive. I like Martel, but it doesn't mean I can tell one from the other. Or I have some kind of expertise with those. I don't. I don't. But you can't get experience without getting experience, right? You get experience by getting it, drinking them down, drinking them down, thinking them down, drink on it and think on it. And then after a while, you get used to the aroma and the taste and you get it right almost every time, like the Jack Daniels. I mean, I can kind of smell it, you know, and I know which I say, oh, that one's Jack Daniels. I heard the Bud Light. Yeah, Bud Light tastes like water. Um, no, it doesn't taste like water. It tastes like watered down beer because Bud Light is basically Budweiser, which is watered down with well, you know, water, tap water. Uh, and it's a lighter version, but it's the most popular beer in America. So apparently people like it. It's not all marketing. Ever had a gimlet with the onions? No, I don't even know what that is. Okay. My prediction here is that I'm going to prefer the James Fox, even though it's a much cheaper, $8.99 a liter. <laughs> cheaper in a normal sense, you understand me. It wasn't cheaper in this sense, but the price I got for the Gibsons is aber in aberration. Okay. Five times cheaper than it should be. So don't go by that. In, a, in, the everyday situa in an everyday situation, the Gibsons is going to be much, much more expensive. Okay. Than the James Fox. Um, but I think I'm going to prefer the James Fox. Hmm. This smells like a lot of wood, oh. which you would think it must be the 12 year age. Been in a wood, uh, it's been in an oak barrel for 12 years, probably an old used bourbon barrel. Nothing wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with it. That's what Canadian whiskeys generally use old bourbon barrels. Uh, <coughs> sweet corn, little nectar, honeycomb. Yeah, like a honeycomb or honeycomb cereal. Think about honeycomb cereal. Okay. If you drank Canadian Club, it's really strong with honeycomb cereal. You say, where's the milk? I'm going to eat my cereal. I mean, it really, it's like that. It's, it's bizarre, man. Gimlet is a martini with tiny onion instead of an olive. Oh, those martini onions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see those sold at the store, those little cocktail onions. We got green onions that grow behind this house here out in, by the woods, and they're tall, and they have a little bulb, and it looks kind of like those. I've, I've eaten those onions in the wild. They're very good. Those green onions that grow wild around here. They're kind of strong, but they're good. Okay. This one doesn't have the wood in the nose. This one's got, well, a little bit of wood. It's got more rye spice. Uh, oh, who has, who is known for their over uh, exuberance in the use of rye? Sazerac. Sazerac gets wild for rye. Huh. And there's a little pungent note in some. Um, it's almost like a cellar, like an old. You go down these cellars and a moldy, like black mold. And you say, that doesn't sound good. But if you go into these places, it has that. It's spring onion season. Yeah. You're right. I think they're already dying out here. But once February. Late January and February gets here in Louisiana and starts warming up because you have warm days and even January, those onions just start coming coming out, growing, sprouting everywhere. I think this is the James Fox though. Do you ever had watermelon Ciroc? Oh no, I never had a Ciroc of any brand. No, but I've seen them around a lot, and uh, the Ciroc VS brandy is popular. It seems to be. Good morning, Jay. Good morning to you, Max Walt in the Russian Federation. Okay, now I got to taste, taste time.
I was saying this is James Fox. I don't know. Hmm. I get a lot of corn, 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 grits, corn grits. Just go buy some. Go get the Bob's Red Mill Polenta, which is the yellow. Or you can get the white. Or you can get, a, if you want to save a lot of money, get the Quaker white hominy grits. They're dry. Uh, but all you got to do is add water and heat them up. And they'll absorb all the water. And it'd be like porridge or cream of wheat. And then uh, taste it without salt. And you get this taste. Now, of course, you want to add salt, a little bit of salt, give it some flavor, but some black pepper and hot sauce. Maybe put some hogshead cheese in it or some uh, sausage. But but um, this has got that taste. And a lot of wood. And it's not that super pleasant, honestly. Tell you what, though, this has a lot of wood, too. And I'm not picking up a whole lot of that almond extract rum flavoring that they put these things that Sazerac is noted for. With the Canadian leaf, the James Fox, Canadian Hunter, Canadian Limited, rich and rare, and goes on and on and on. There's a little bit of it here, but it's funny how when you drink one against the other, sometimes it'll throw the taste off like you can't pick up stuff. Do you get a buzz from these taste challenges? Well, thumbs up and good morning, says Jacob Downey. Thumbs up and bottoms up. Uh, I, I will uh, def not let me not uh, address that question, which means by not by refusing to answer the question, I've already answered the question, right? It'd be like during the 1950s, they asked the person in the House of Representatives, Mr. Jankowski, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? How dare you ask me a question like that? America was founded on the... And they're like, no, 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 no. We're just asking you a question. Are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Sir, I am quite insulted by this line of questioning. Abraham Lincoln said, and so they would never answer the question which meant you knew the answer. <laughs> so do I get a buzz drinking these? I'm not gonna ever, how dare you ask me a question like that, sir? Hey bro, says Ma. I've been sipping so much high gravity hurricane <laughs> and I would so much discourage sipping too much of that stuff. It's so strong while I'm drinking 40 proof. Okay. um. He's drinking 8.1%, 16.2 proof. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, that's a huge 25 ounce. Huh? This is not anywhere close to it. Ha ha. Okay, I got to do this taste challenge. It's harder than I thought. I thought it was going to be a slam dunk, easy peasy, you know, the easiest thing in the world. But it ain't. <laughs> um. Uh, I don't know, but that's got kind of a bad bite to it. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, this one has kind of a bad bite to it. And that Gibson's has kind of a bad bite to it. And my experience with the Gibson's is it has kind of a bad bite to it. You know, you didn't mind and I heard that I mentioned a bad bite. I've drunk a good 40% of this, mm, mm, no, maybe 35% of this bottle. And um, that's a common thing I notice. Bad bite. Bad bite, bad bite. There's a pattern. There's a theme. So is it the older the liquor, the stronger it gets? No, not necessarily. It might have stronger flavor, stronger nose, but it won't necessarily, it won't really make it higher alcohol. It just, you know, it depends how they produce it before they start aging it. A bark spite, like bark's root beer? No, it's way harsher than that. No, it's way harsher than bark's root beer. This thing is like, it bites back. You drink it and it's like, oh, I got bit by a little chihuahua or a toy poodle. It's not pleasant. I had some Canadians not too pleased with me. 
when I was talking about how Gibson's wasn't that great, they were like, you're stupid because it's one of the most popular whiskeys in Canada. I said, I'm not stupid. It's just the way I feel about it. I don't owe, you know, William Grant and Sons, I'm not owing them anything. They make a product. I'm telling you what I think about it. I'm not going to automatically say it's great because it's $65 a bottle. I'm going to call it as I see it. I pay you over $220 a bottle for the uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label. Did it live up to that price? No way. Now, you might say, well, you gave it a 96. That ain't, that's nothing. 96, that's nothing. I got $10 bottles of whiskey that were a 96, most excellent. All right. If I'm paying over $220 a bottle, it better score above 100. It should be above 100, better than perfect. Like the West Lateran 12, which I tried from Belgium. It was $14 a bottle for one bottle of beer, 11.2 ounces. $14 a bottle. And it was above 100. It lived up to the price point. That's not something I would buy all the time, you know, but I bought it. And it, but this, uh, Johnny Walker Blue didn't live up to, because it's, uh, anyway. All right. Um, I mean, obviously, if it's a 96, it's, it's a most excellent product, right? It's an A. It's great. <laughs> but you can get great for $25. Damn, that's pretty high. Yeah, extremely high, crazily high, stupidly high. And I did it. Okay, I did it. All right, I bought it, but nobody can tell me, all you buy is cheap whiskey. See, nobody can tell me that. I'm going to say cheap whiskey. No, that's not all I buy. You're wrong. That's usually what I buy. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm going to say, well, I better take one more taste over. Yeah. Man, this is a lot more trouble than I had believed. I don't know, but this got flavoring. It tastes like it's got those flavorings. The rum, the brandy, the plum wine. It's just a nicer, smoother product. I don't care. This is 12 years. This is three years. You said that's a nine year. That's a nine year difference. You know, you got to be a, a, a rank amateur to think a three-year-old whiskey is going to beat a 12-year-old. Well, maybe I'm a rank amateur. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you right now, I think the James Fox is better. But to tell you the truth, I think most of what Sazerac makes from Canada, most of their Canadian whiskeys bottled at Buffalo Trace are better than uh, other people's. And if that upsets you, I'm sorry. I think that Sazerac tends to make products that are better than the other companies. But whether we're talking about rum, brandy, well, I don't know about brandy, Hartley. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's not because their headquarters is in New Orleans, 32 miles from me. It's nothing like that. I mean, the actual headquarters is New Orleans is 25 miles, but, you know, from the city limits into where their headquarters is about 32 miles. I just think it's better. They make good scotch and they make great bourbons. Will Ron be victorious? I hope so. Fleischmann's rye was my grandmother's drink. Yep, and Sazerac bought Fleischmann's. They bought the whole company. So if you see Fleischmann's, it's Sazerac, okay? Uh, as long as you can drink. Will Ron be victorious? He will. Well, let's see. I'm going to say this is James Fox. Well, I'll know I'm right because it'll say JF on the label. And I'm finished with this for now. No more Canadian whiskey for a couple of months. Tuesday, God willing, Taste Challenge at Dawn Busters. We're going to do Johnny Walker Red Label versus Johnny Walker Blue. You say, oh, my goodness. A $20 bottle versus a $220 bottle? Yep, that's what's going to happen. Oh, how you feel, Plate? This says, 
This doesn't say James Fox. This is the other whiskey. This is the Gibsons. Oh, man. Oh, well. Hey, well, I couldn't tell them apart. I couldn't tell them apart. Well, if I can't tell something apart, I ain't paying more for the other one. Cuss the luck. Cuss the luck. Oh, well, heck. It does have that kind of bad bite, though, at the end. <laughs> well, it, does that mean that the uh, Gibson's is probably flavored? Probably so. Most Canadian whiskey is. Hit that light, people, says Ma. Ma, the meatloaf. No, no, says Joe Biden's ginger. Well, well, sometimes you get it wrong, and I got it wrong three times in a row. Last three ta taste challenges, I got it wrong. I don't feel bad about it because I don't see anybody else doing these on the Internet. They'll do taste challenges, but it's not blind. They're just looking at, that's a real problem because you're bringing in a lot of bias you don't even realize. People have biases, biases they're not aware of, so, or only partially aware of. So my operating method is blind taste test. You never want to know what you're drinking. There's the, I just pulled the tags off. I got to make new tags for the scotch. Thanks for watching this video production. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's the way it goes. And I'm see you uh, later on today, maybe or whatever. And uh, go and watch the news. Thank you very much.